Good evening, church family. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks, and this evening we will continue the teaching series, When You Pray. And tonight we will look at the phrase, Our Father in Heaven. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come together to study your word. God, we ask that you would just speak to our hearts and minds that we may leave this study with a greater understanding of our Father, the Father that we pray to, the Father that we talk to, help us to understand what it is we need to know that we might be better servants in your kingdom. It's in your name we pray and ask it all. Amen. So tonight we're going to continue uh, in this Lord's Prayer teaching series, When You Pray. And tonight our focus is going to be on the phrase, Our Father in Heaven. And so I'm looking at Matthew 6, uh, verses uh, 9, uh, maybe 9a or 9b it could be called. And so that's our phrase that we're talking about, Our Father in Heaven. But I'd like to read to you... Uh, and talk about the context. The context for the, the prayer is the Sermon of the Mount. And Jesus is discussing how we should pray. We are not to pray to impress God or others, or to think that we might be able to manipulate God in order to get what we want. Rather, we are to come simply as a child would to his father, honestly, being real about our failures and our feelings, our worries, our anxieties and our need for God. That's the context. And so uh, I know I said I, I'm using Matthew, but I'm going to look at it from the message version because I love what he says. I, I love the, the everyday ordinary language of the message. And he says, and when you come before God, don't turn into that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for 15 minutes of fame. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense his grace. It says the world is full of the so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. And then he's at verse 9. Our Father in heaven. I don't know if you realize it or not, but we have been given one of the greatest gifts anyone could imagine. It is a gift that brings wisdom, comfort, peace, joy, encouragement, release, strength, and change. The gift in which I speak is the gift of direct access to God in prayer. Prayer, you see, is our lifeline and learning about it is one of the most important things we could do as a believer. Have you ever received a phone call and the person on the other end immediately started talking or asking for something before you ever had an opportunity to say hello? They never acknowledged that you have answered the phone. Or sometimes at school, I'm walking down the hall and children walk up to me and say, do you have a pencil? Do you have an extra box of crayons? Or can I go to your room to get water? Or can you tie my shoe? Without ever acknowledging who I am. Sometimes we are like that in our prayers. We never stop to acknowledge our Father. Jesus' instructions provide a starting point in our conversation with God. Jesus starts at our Father in heaven. Too often we rush in and never recognize who we are speaking to. 
We never acknowledge the creator of the universe. We never acknowledge the one who can calm our fears and take care of every hurt and ailment we have. We must recognize who it is we are praying to, our Father. So that made me think about several things. First, our Father helps us to know and remember that we are in relationship. Genesis 2:18 says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Since the garden of Eden and Adam and Eve, it is clear that God never intended for us to be alone. We need relationships. We need the connection of others. We are in relationship with God and we are in relationship with one another. First John three and one says, see what kind of love the father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are, we are in relationship. God created us to be in relationship with him. This prayer by Jesus reminds us of our relationship with God. Our father demonstrates the value of relationship and the intimacy that we share. So our father, first of all, reminds us that we are in relationship. Then our father reminds us that we are part of a family. We are God's children. We have the same father. We are united and unified because we share a common belief and we have a shared mission. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ and the Father are one and that he is also the only begotten son of God. This familiar term indicate God regards Jesus as a family member. Born again believers, you and I who are in the in Christ crowd are told that we too are members of this family. So we are family. We're reminded that we are in relationship and we are reminded that we're part of a family. And then we're reminded that we're part of a community. When we look at the word our and we break it down, it is a plural first person pronoun. It means that there's possessiveness or that it owns or it belongs, something belongs to us. Talking about all of us. We are one in Christ. The apostle Paul says in Galatians 3:28, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female for you are all one in Christ. We are all equal in God's sight. The thought of being in community is throughout this prayer. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, our father, our daily bread, our debts, lead us community. This is all plural first person pronoun relating to the community of believers. That's us. We are in community. We're in relationship. We're part of a family and we are in community. Then our father helps us to slow down and take note of our concept of who God is. The nature of our prayers are impacted by how we view God. Jesus viewed God as a loving father. He went to God with everything. He valued his relationship with God. And I know this because he spent time with God every day. And he knows that God can do anything. He has full confidence in God. Sometimes, unfortunately, our concept of God, of who God is, is based on our concept of who our earthly fathers are in our lives. If our fathers were absent, if our fathers were detached and unloving, if our fathers were not reliable, we may view God as an absent father who is not involved in our lives and who does not keep his word. You see, our concept of who God is must be healthy in order for us to believe and know that God is our father. What am I saying? 
As we begin to pray and ask God to heal us in that place of hurt, we can begin to be encouraged and to discover a relationship with a father who loves us, who loves you, who loves me, and who deeply cares for us. Our concept of who God is impacts the way we pray and way, the way we talk and share with God. And it's important that our concept of God be healthy in order for us to believe that God is our Father. So once we talk about our concept of who God is, once we realize our Father reminds us that we're in relationship, that we're in community, and that we're in family, we have to look at the our Father and know that our Father knows our needs. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 and 8, your father knows what you need before you ask him. I love the way Isaiah says it. He says, before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. We don't pray to God to tell God things that he doesn't know before we told him. We pray to commune with an appeal to a loving God who wants to, us to bring every need and every worry, everything before his throne. We need to know that we have a God, a father, our father who cares. And then we have a father who not only knows our need, but he cares about us. Matthew says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap. They don't plant or harvest anything. They don't gather in barns, but yet your heavenly father takes care of them. God cares about you. Our father reminds us that we're in relationship, that we're part of a family, that we're part of a community. It reminds us that we have a father who cares about us and who knows our needs. So then the next phrase of that is our father in heaven. God is our father and he is our father in heaven. First, the in heaven reminds us and it separates God from our earthly father. And it maintains the level of respect, honor and reverence that is due God. While we say our father referring to the relationship and the intimacy, we say in heaven to remind us that God is high and lifted up, that God is God over all things. We recognize this phrase that God has power to act on our behalf. The apostle Paul says God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, we come to recognize that God is able to work on our behalf. The psalmist says the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all the earth. So we come to realize that God is high and lifted up and that he is all powerful, that he could act on our behalf. As we begin our prayer, we understand that we pray to our Father who is in heaven, showing that we have access to God in a personal and intimate way, knowing that no matter where we are, we have a father who wants to hear from us, who wants a relationship with us, and who cares for us because we are part of his family. We have a father who is all-knowing, all-powerful, and who is concerned about every detail. No matter how small we think it is, God never thinks it's small. The Bible says that he knows the number of hairs on our head, every detail. God wants to hear from you. Our Father in heaven. Church family, I pray that you have been blessed by our time together, that you've heard something that has encouraged you, that has stretched you, because we'll continue this series throughout the next several weeks. Be blessed.